That was the first video I ever edited in Premiere Pro when I was on an internship at Hans Hermans when I was 13. And to be honest, that video is super boring, but it kickstarted six years of filmmaking for fun and fooling around with every camera I could find, which eventually got me into the best media course in the Netherlands. If you clicked on this video, you're probably looking for some magical guide that is going to make you an amazing filmmaker after you've been done watching this video. Well, if that's you, then I'm gonna have to disappoint you because this video is not that at all. In this video, I'm going to give you my three biggest takeaways of what I learned after two years in media college. Hi. I'm Storm, and besides trying to grow my channel on YouTube, I'm also a full-time student now rounding up my second year of the course Creative Business at the Breda University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands, where I specialize in audiovisual production. Each year, over a thousand students sign up, but only 180 get the chance to sit in this very auditorium. Now, how my school works is that we learn a lot through experience rather than through theory only. We get to work in really fun group projects where we learn theory first and then get to apply it in the real world. But after two years of college, what exactly did I learn? 1. Failing is learning and you can't fail if you don't try hard things. I can't count on my two hands how many videos have come out terribly different than how I imagined them to turn out in my head. And when I say different, what I actually mean is kind of bad. Last year I volunteered to make the after movie for the film festival of the first year's short movies. Um, I had a little bit of camera experience with my photography so I thought how hard could it be, right? Nope. My camera settings were totally wrong and most of my footage looked like this. And more recently in this video, it was my first time shooting in a pretty dark setting. Although we had lights, my camera settings were just in a way that my shutter speed was way too high because I wanted to avoid the mistake that I had made earlier with the blurriness. But this resulted in me having to crank up the ISO super high. Basically, what a high ISO does to your footage is that it makes it grainy like this footage. And to be honest, that's just very ugly. The latter one being for a client, which is tricky. And I hooked up my editor with footage that was honestly a pain in the ass to fix in post. But believe me when I say that none of my footage will ever be blurry or grainy again unless I want it to. 2. Own what you make. Mark. Yes, brother. Here? Yeah. This is Mark McInnes, one of my teachers who in his career was an executive producer for big broadcasters such as MTV Canada and Talk TV, producing shows like MTV Live, Peak Season, E-Talk, and working with names like Drake, Adele, Tom Cruise, you name it. He's without a doubt one of the teachers that has inspired me the most in my two years in college. And one time when I was having a fun conversation with him, I asked him what he wished he'd known at our age in his career. And this is what he said. When a, bro when a broadcaster yeah. with money and resources and studio facilities comes yeah. to you and says, hey, do you want to make something? It's like, yes, you don't ask any questions. Mm, yeah, so I was very young, 20 something, when I got my first call, not from MTV, MTV but from CTV, which was a major broadcaster like yeah. a commercial broadcaster and the job there was to um, remake a failed entertainment show yeah. that, that they were it was currently going on there and my boss said mark you go do this uh, we don't have anyone else to do it i'm firing everybody else here and i'm bringing you in you do the show cool. so i created a show called uh, e-talk entertainment talk yeah and uh, I just created it, we just made it, no questions asked, yeah. and... I was like fully you on the project, but it was just like you didn't own it. Right, well, yeah, because yeah. you work for, you work for a, ne a network, yeah. they pay you a salary, yeah. so you don't get any ownership of the things you create or no. the things you make. Yeah. In, unlike in the real world, if you make it without anybody paying you to, it's automatically yours. Yeah. So I didn't know that at the time, really, and I didn't know that it would matter at the time, so I started the show, E-Talk, e uh, it's still on the air today. It celebrated its like 30th or 20th anniversary <laughs> a few years ago or whatever, yeah. and and a show that's still on the air today means it's been making money for that company yeah. year after year after year. And if I had just owned 1% or 5% of that idea, I would yeah. have been getting paid all of these uh, years. Because you're not getting any... Uh, what's Residuals. It Residuals. No. no. You, you sign when you work for an employer like that is in the employment yeah. deal that you they own everything you make, everything you do. Oh, wow. 
And so, but I didn't know that that show no. was going to keep lasting. And then I go to MTV and I do I, I do it two more times. Yeah. I create shows that the network really needs. I love doing it. My staff loves the shows. They yeah. become hits. And so I don't ask any questions. It's yeah. just great. So I made a show called The After Show. I made that up completely myself and produced several successful seasons of it. Well, that show is being copied and copied many times around the world, the yeah. format. And if I had to own the format for yeah. that, then I wouldn't get paid for every country or every other. You probably wouldn't have ended up here. Uh, good point, <laughs> uh, that's a good point. So I'm not complaining, I'm just answering no, no. your question. Yeah, yeah, no, cool, but yeah, obviously. Yeah. Although the time span that Mark is talking about is very different than the ones we're in now, I think the lesson to take from this is that you should really make sure that everything you make, you really own and that you're proud of it and that you use it with your name on it. Because although you might think it's shit now, it may really come and helpful in the future. 3. Use what you have. I think I've probably heard every person on this platform say the phrase, gear doesn't matter. If this is the first time that you're hearing this, then please put it in the comments, because to be honest, I would just be very honored to be the first one. Because believe me, <laughs> I'm not gonna be the last. I think the reason they say that is because at the end of the day, it's true. I mean, I filmed a majority of the videos on this YouTube channel on my iPhone 11, but let's be honest cool expensive gear is just like fucking awesome so naturally when you have access to such an amazing equipment desk like I have you want to use it now how it works in my school is that for every piece of equipment that you have to rent you have to get the approval of a supervisor which is basically the same thing as telling your client what equipment you're gonna use and how much is it gonna cost them so what I do is that for some shoots for my project at school, what I do is that I rent out one extra piece of equipment that I do not per se need for the shoot, but I do get a reason to get the approval, which is basically the same thing for your clients. So you get to test out this really cool piece of equipment. So eventually when you do crank up your production value and you do get that budget and you can use it, you know what it can get you. And so to put it in the equipment list, and also subsequently how to use it. For my own productions, I know if it's worth spending thousands of dollars on it or not. And then finally, the biggest one, my biggest takeaway after two years of media college. If you wanna become a good filmmaker, you have to make a shitload of videos. I'm sorry to disappoint you again, but it's true. It is as simple as that. If you go through the process of concepting, scripting, shot list, storyboard, editing, countless times from beginning to end, it will make you a better filmmaker. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be long. You just have to make it. And I promise you, if you just do that over and over again, you will learn more than any school could ever teach you.